And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me as always is my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. <laughs> This is a this is a bit of a side -ish episode of Valley of the Judge, one of our occasional one-offs that we've done that we've done in the past. But I figure this I figure this would be as good a time to do it in between the major seasonal stuff, which that will return this Friday. Don't worry. But since this since this little document dropped a few days ago, I I felt I felt it would make an interesting thing to cover and. So I pitched so I pitched the idea to Zan and he was and he was open for it. That being Tidebreaker, which in the interest of full disclosure, I did back Tidebreaker on Kickstarter. I have had I've had his I've had its creator on the show twice. And because and because of that because of that is it possible that there's going to be some bias as we go into this? Yes. But I'm going to try and limit that as much as much as possible. And I have no bias, so I can be the angel for once. If you if you are the angel in this situation, then we are really fucked. Monk, you should have always known that this ship was headed to hell in a handcart. Oh, I'm so. Oh, I am quite certain of that. <laughs> and even even though even though there is that even though there is that particular issue, because of how many because of how many kickstarters I'm involved with in one form or another, I feel like I feel, I feel like it. I feel like um. Saying that, saying that I disclosing that I backed something is getting a little bit redundant. But at the same time, I th I'd like to think I've maintained my integrity and not got and not gotten too biased, especially since well, nobody bribes me. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Usually, they give you the freebies after the fact. Yeah, and this one technically isn't a free a freebie that I was given. This was released as part of an update for. Um, Tidebreaker. Yeah. And I'm no, I'm no stranger to Quick Stars, and we're no stranger to them either. In fact, one of our more infamous episodes of Valley of the Judged was us ripping into a certain Quick Start, which <laughs> time has not healed that wound. I still don't like it. I still have no desire to de to delve into the full product when that comes. It is still bad. Mm -hmm. If you're th if you're that desperate for PBTA meets Avatar, go play Legend of the Elements going to be a lot cheaper and you and you won't feel dirty afterwards. Legend of the Elements is like what, 5 bucks? Probably may, might be even less during GM's day. I was probably thinking GM's day prices. I don't know. Legend Legend of the Elements, a way to do avatar and PBTA, right. Yeah. Of course there's other systems that you can that you can do it in, but that's beside that's beside the point. Now since this is your first entry when it comes to Tidebreaker, let me set the stage. So, as it says, it's going for a it's it's a cinematic T TTRPG system, as it says, and it is one that it, that that um because of how, because of how it's how it involves heroes a lot. Um, there were moments when I was reading some of the pitches and I could hear you say "run" in the back of my head, even though I didn't have my playlist up. Well, you say run does fit everything. <laughs> um, there are still YouTube videos of that going up to this day. Okay. Well, there's still pe there's still people. Do I'm pretty sure there's still people doing Modox theme goes with trolling. I'm sure there are still people doing Guile's theme goes with everything. Well, it's because it does. Bum ba dum ba dum. <laughs> <laughs> so. The, what we are going through is the quick start. This is not going to be as long as our um, as our Heavens and Heresies episodes because this is only fourteen pages. 
Then again, some of the, then again, some of those were of similar length, and they went long. So who the fuck knows? <laughs> but well, those were fourteen pages of very detailed information, Monk. Yeah, this is meant to be the quick and dirty, jump in, get your feet wet uh, with Tidebreaker. Mm -hmm. Irony. Yeah, or coincidence, at least Tidebreaker. Now. We open, we open with the TLDR, sh with what is called the TLDR sheet, saying, This is a quick start guide for Tidebreaker. The rules are simplified substantially to help new players quickly make characters and get into the game faster. At the end, we provide a conversion guide for the full version of Tidebreaker. And... Do you, do you hear that? Good, good, good. A conversion guide at the end of a quick start. More quick starts need to do that. I'd say more RPGs need to do conversion guides, period. It'll certainly make my job easier. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> but I do like that the na that the name of the chapter that the second that the third page is taken from is called Chapter Three. You built it. Now go play in it. Uh, but we open with what is Tidebreaker. Basically, that it is a TR TDRPG system that lets you step into the role of hyper-competent heroes and explore worlds that your group creates together from the ground up. And, of course, it'd just be a warm-up for you until the big bad, at least until the big bad shows up. If cinematographic combat... Jeez, try, try saying that five times fast. Cinematographic combat, cinematographic combat, cinematographic combat, cinematographic combat. I hate you. What can I say? Tongue twisters were a passion of mine when I was a young man. Yep. Oh, is not your style. Role-playing your way through masterful diplomacy to make sure you get your way is always a great option. Of course, unless you spun yourself into a web of losing all hope, spelling out your doom. Um, hope and doom are meta-currencies that may be used in both combat and non-combat situations. While the GM uses doom as their resource, the players use hope, and the tug-of-war of this currency con conflict is instrumental. The clever use of hope and doom will give a level of strategic gameplay that you can weave into into the story of your campaigns and setting. Why does right. this sound like boons and banes? Um, I'd say I'd say a, I'd say a far a far more accurate analogy would be the light side and dark side points in in the Saga Edition. Not in not in Saga Edition in the Jet in the Star Wars Genesis trilogy. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, I can see it. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, also, plot points and the Doom Pool in Marvel Heroic. I still haven't looked into cor into Cortex Prime. I will eventually. I just haven't done it yet. Um, but it goes hope and Doom are met. I already mentioned the whole meta currency thing. Impress your friends with showstoppers. Where the best showstoppers ignite, exploding your chances of success into imaginative theatrical moments you will never forget. Um, I get the I get the whole thing with put with putting terms and with putting terms in um, bold, but I feel like this is one of those situations where it might have been best to. In the I'm say, I'm saying if you do if you're doing this whole bolden thing, take a page, steal a page from the cipher system and put and put references and in, into the um sides that might be in the full version you never know yeah if if it if it if <coughs> i'm just put i'm just putting that out there as a bit as a bit a bit a bit of a pointer um, mm -hmm. then we have an aside i'm going to need dice and stuff right yep at least 10d6 worth if and then it go, then it goes into what that what that actually means? We don't need to go into that because we know what that is. We've played Shadowrun. We know what a shit ton of dice means. Oh, we've all played, you know, war top, war 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 table ga uh, gaming. Mm -hmm. We know what it is to roll thirty fucking d six and see how many wounds you've inflicted. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Then we get to how to create a character, or as it calls it, the casting call. And starting with the stats, which we have six of. Might, Agility, Wits, Endurance, Focus, and Intuition. I'd, I'd like to note here that it does say that each of these stats is a pair. Mm -hmm. 
So might is paired with endurance, agility with focus, and wits with intuition. Yeah, I do. Li- I do like that. I do like that setup, especially since in, I, as time has gone on, I've gradually moved away from universal defense to mm-hmm. an ex- to an extent. I know we use it in our. I know we use it in our project, but I don't think we're as strict as games have been in the past when it comes to that kind of universal defense. Well. And we're just aping our source. Yeah. <clears throat> Final Fantasy does lots of universal defenses. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that I one thing that I do like when it comes to when it comes to the um, point distribution is array styles. Mm-hmm. I like this because when it, whenever it comes to the whole, okay, here's your attributes, distribute points as, as you like. Um. Even though it's a minor thing, you can run into analysis paralysis with that kind of setup, where pe- where people don't know what um, what would be good ranges for for their character, or in some cases you have people try and try and min max that shit. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> something I think is important is that it does say that your stats can range from one to five, mm-hmm. and each of these arrays goes from one to five with two threes. Mm-hmm. So it's one, two, three, three, four, five. Yeah. And I think the importance of choosing an array lies in the definitions of the six uh, the six attributes. Yeah. It's for that re- it's for that reason that I pre- I appreciate the uh, the array setup. And I'm assume I'm assuming in the full book there's go- there's going to be a um a few possibly a few more arrays or the possibility of of random determination if somebody wants to go that route. Well, it, and it even says, read the full version for other ways of generating stat for further customization. Mm-hmm. Which, <clears throat> giving people arrays that even have names like this, like each of these have a name that gives you a sense of the type of particular play style you might see with these arrays. Uh, and that's fantastic. Like you said, analysis paralysis aside, this actually, somebody looks at that, sees the word, sees how the stats play out, compares it to the definition of each stat, and they're like, I see how that's supposed to play. Mm-hmm. Now, then we get secondary stats. First, your power level, which starts at 2, and is added to combat rolls, speciality, critical value, and recovery value. Um, Critical value is the sum of endurance, focus, and power level. If your opponent hits this, you get cr- you get crit, which we'll get we'll probably get into a mi- in a minute. Recovery value is might, agility, and power. And if an opponent hits this while recovering, they rise up and count and counterattack. And momentum is a resource that's used to power certain ab- certain abilities and perform a momentum shift. Which we'll get again. We'll get. We'll probably get into in a minute. You gain momentum by missing and adding a number of points equal to your equal to your wits, or by using specific character abilities. Okay, I really like what they did here with um, the quick secondary stats table, mm-hmm. which is essentially shows you <clears throat> how each of these would play out from the arrays before and the primary stat values. Mm-hmm. And we, that also includes attrition. When you're hit all, not sure if that's a typo or not, successes rolled by, by your opponent are added to this, to this pool. The current rating is added to the DR of any future recovery attempts you make. I think the comma is supposed to for, go after hit and before all. So when you are hit, all successes rolled by your opponent are added to this pool. It makes a lot more sense. Yep. <laughs> um. Again, this is a quick play. Sometimes these things happen. Mm-hmm. Let's see, then we have jobs and specialties. You pick a num- pick a number of things you're okay at equal to your intuition. You may roll these particular types of task checks normally. You may include anything generically heroic to this list, like running, jumping, driving a common car, fighting for free. You're a badass. You're supposed to be able to do that kind of stuff. Afterwards, pick one thing you're great at called your specialty. You can add your power level whenever you roll 
an action involving this task. Anything that you are not okay at isn't your special or isn't your specialty is considered untrained and gains botch one. Um, I'm hoping we I'm hoping that botch one is explained later in the document. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to when it comes to the whole job and specialty thing, I end up being reminded of the of the eternal burr up my ass when it came to aspects in fate. Now I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to harp on the quick start for this, but I do hope there's some example jobs and sp and specialties in the full book. Mhm. Mm because I've seen the, I I've seen this kind of thing quite quite a bit where where it's like where where instead of putting a list there's there's the thing of fill in the blank if it if your GM approves it. The problem is is that when you do that you end up with a situation where a lot of players aren't going to know what would even count. Yeah, uh, botch. It looks like botch is explained later, mm -hmm. um, in the quick start at least. Yeah, I really like the fact here that it says you can pick a number of things you're okay at equal to your intuition, um, and you may include anything gener generically heroic on the list, like running, jumping, driving a common car, or fighting for free. Mm -hmm. Which means, you know, <clears throat> those don't count against your total when compared to your intuition score. Which means you can include a lot of generic things that all heroes should be good at. That's actually a wide range of things. Now, next is abilities, which is your active powers. Magic, martial arts, special weapons, and similar things. These are listed by three special actions listed as A, B, and C that represent your character's capabilities to excel using their various skills and tools. This, uses a, this quick start uses a statement from your character to define what they can do in their own words. It makes the... Makes the includes the following elements: prefix, a target action, and suffix, a benefit of your choice. Oh, or and and target action and, and benefit of your choice. I feel like the, <laughs> I feel like the and in this should be should be parenthesized. Well, <clears throat> I mean it's a. Um, mm -hmm. You don't use an in front of consonant sounds. Yeah, it's and I know, it, I know it's another it's, typo. I know it seems that I know it seems that we're picking on the typos, but just but just remember, in the in the in the halls of the temple, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are cremated equally. Not to mention, it's a typo, and we know it's a typo. Mm -hmm. But poking fun at typos is always in vogue. My English teacher hated me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, that doesn't narrow it. That doesn't narrow it down because all of them hated me for that. <laughs> Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, an easy way to cr to quickly create an ability is to use the following format and reword it to fit your character's voice. When I do X, I gain Y. Once you've done this three times, you'll have a full set of actions in A, B, and C ability, each with a defining statement for your character. I get the idea, but once again, I'm hoping to see examples in the full book so that people have something to... There's examples off. on the next page, Monk. Oh, yeah. yeah, and we do have... I stand, I stand corrected on that. We do have a few. Um, so in creating a prefix, you can be as vague and, or specific, but they recommend the, f the following. So let's see, we have attack, dash, block, dodge. Um, we, should we could probably put the four Ds in this. Dodge, dick, <laughs> dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. That is the That's funny. that is the worst Freudian slip I've had tonight. That um, that 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 was you turning the four D's into the four F's. <laughs> and for no, anyone who doesn't know what the four F's are, they're the four simple biological urges: uh, feeding, fighting, fleeing, and fucking. And then we ha we have a few examples. This gun never misses when I attack. Grandfather's shield has never let me down when I block. 
Not even lightning can hit me when I dodge. And so those are all example prefixes. So that's the X. Mm -hmm. When I do X, and now you're setting it up for the I get Y. Yep. Let's see. Creating suffixes follows the similar logic to prefixes. While you're free to choose any benefit you imagine, we recommend you either gain Ignite 1 or gain plus 1 power level as a starting point. Feel free to experiment with some of the keywords from the full release. So we have... So we also have we also have a few terms when it when it comes to this when it comes to it. Um, mm -hmm. the, these look to be the um, other keywords that are examples from the full release that they're talking about. Yeah, bank, i.e., bank succession su successes or attrition, i.e., tallying them up and saving them for later. Abilities with the bank keyword will typically add them to the results of a check as part of the resolution. Downshift, you drop down one slot in the initiative regardless of your initial roll. Um, cornered, if you're the last <laughs> character to act in a round and are downshifted, you may not dodge and are treated as if you chose to block instead. Um, upshift, you jump up one slot in the initiative regardless of your initial roll. If you're the first character to act in the round and are upshifted, you may not block and are treated as, as if you chose to dodge instead. Hmm. Um, I do find I do find the cornered and overextended to be an interesting use of initiative that we don't see a whole lot. Yeah, if you try to go higher or lower than the highest or lowest slots in initiative order, you get um, limitations on your actions. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, forced mm -hmm. movement. Some will some attacks will cause you to be jettisoned out of your current zone into another. If an effect gives you the option to move, as per a few on dodge functions. You shift once down one step in the initiative. Force movement effects trigger on a hit unless otherwise stated. And we have two sub two subheadings. Um, propel forcefully moves opponents out of their current zone and away from the source. And the opposite, pull pulls targets one zone closer towards source from up to one zone away. And then a few exam then a few suffix examples. I gain plus one power level. My next attack propels my target away one zone, or I downshift my target. So you could make some of your your uh, your abilities do things other than giving yourself ignite one or one power level. Hmm. You could instead do things like control positioning or control initiative order on them. <clears throat> and uh, Man, I remember just now how much I played CC characters and City of Heroes and DC Universe Online. CC characters are powerful, yo. Do not underestimate them. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny that it's funny that I'm covering something like this when I just when our re when the review for Wild Talents just came out today at the time of this recording. <laughs> and in that one, I had, I had mentioned that the way that it handles powers by not having a list of, not having a defined list of effects that you spend points on, but instead spend points on a pow on a power set based on your permissions, is going is going to be, was going to be a thing that people would have to get used to. Even veteran supers players don't really ha don't really have that particular setup all that often. It's usually just a list of powers, and it's one of those things where I, I had said at the time it needs more examples so that people can wrap their head around what you're actually doing with its power system. Because once you get past that, it's it's pretty good, and I can see that kind of thing happening here, where because of the fact that it's going with a somewhat heroic system, people are going to be going into this looking for a power list. When this is, it's very clear that this is a game that's built around power set creation. Yeah. So, I'm glad I'm glad that there's a set of prefixes and suffixes, but I'm hoping in the full product there are more examples because it's going to need them. Oh, I, I guarantee this. This definitely all looks like. Hey, here's a smattering of these things, a taster of what you're going to find in the full. Mm 
Mm-hmm. That's how it feels so far. Yeah. Let's see, then we have getting getting things done. The main idea is the GM sets the situation and you respond in character. Sometimes that means solving problems thrown at you. Regardless of the method, it's resolved by building up a dice pool, which is a number of D6s determined by the factors described and comparing the amount of successes to a difficulty rating, which represents how hard the current objective is. If you meet it or beat it, you get the job done. I always like the whole rule of ties go to the attacker. Yep, that's always a good one. Mm -hmm. So the approach is stat plus power level. If I wanted to be cheeky, I could say that power level is our is this game's version of the proficiency bonus, but um, it's a but it's a proficiency bonus that actually makes sense. Mm. But um, <laughs> plus stunt bonus, as you should always be doing stunts. You can this can be shorted to stat plus three. Power level starts at two plus one for doing a stunt. Whenever you're using your specialty or fighting at and stat plus one otherwise. Results of four or higher are successes. Count up your successes. If they re if they beat the DR, you succeed. So, standard f standard form for any Shadowrun player, just not with just with not as many dice. I mean, or you're playing a new Shadowrun character. This is about the number of dice you'd use for a new Shadowrun character. A brand new new runner, not a veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, there are there are a few there are a few ones there are a few uh, nods that can me that can mess with it. First off, advantages, which is just going to be extra dice. Um, then botches. So here's here's the definition of what botch one means. Mm -hmm. So if you you if this isn't something you're good at or your specialty, you get botch one. So. Uh, botch one for every one that is rolled. Remove a success. That's that's like normal for most of these types of games. So the fact that that's not just a flat thing to all dice rolls is actually really nice. <clears throat> it's only if you're untrained that you start botching. That's cool. Yeah, and we have three levels of it. At the worst of it. You're either you're either adding successes or you're losing successes. Yeah, but I, I imagine botch three is something that would be imposed upon you. Mm -hmm. um, if multiple sources give botch one, add them together and step and step up to botch two or three as needed. So yeah, it is a it is a stacking thing. You'd have to have really pissed off the DM or the RNG gods in order to get botch three. Mm. Um. So then we have ign the other the other um, keyword is ignite, which only activates if an effect specifically instructs them to do so. It comes in three stages and is ba and is basically the anti botch. At first, at ignite one, for every six that is rolled, you re-roll a failure. At at and six or five at ignite two and six five or four at ignite three. Ignite 3 essentially means for every success you roll, re-roll all your failures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if multiple sources give Ignite 1, add them together and s step up to 2 or 3 as needed. Um, question that I do have uh, I do have on, on that. I'm guessing you only re-roll once. I would think so. Because <clears throat> it's like per each six and or six or five and or success that you roll mm -hmm. so if you roll all 10d6 and you get six successes and four failures you'd get to re-roll the four failures mm -hmm. <clears throat> i'm guessing the last two like if you're at ignite three i'm saying yeah. so and i'm guessing the last two successes would affect nothing and whatever the outcomes are on the new dice are what's accepted yeah Otherwise, you'd end up re you'd end up re-rolling until until it ended up being a success, and that's way too powerful. Especially if you could somehow give yourself ignite three really easily. Mm -hmm. But if if 
Then we have explode. Um, basically, add another die to your die pool upon the listed condition. Um, so, so it's not. Go ahead. I was going to say it's not quite the same as most exploding dice you see in other games, where upon a perfect roll, such as a six or a ten, you re-roll all dice that got that number. <clears throat> this just adds another die to your pool. Mm -hmm. oh. Interesting. I would I would be curious what the difference between advantage and explode is go is going to be, aside from one of them being an ability keyword. Um, I think that it's also the fact that explode is a con since it's an ability keyword, mm -hmm. it has to go into example suffixes. It, it, when I do X, I get explosion. Or something along those lines. I can go, I can go with that. Then we have stunts. An advantage given to any role when attempting to make a cool description always results in a minimum of plus one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the range for if the range for stunt bonuses plus one to plus three, a la the stunt rule in Exalted, <laughs> which. If you're, do, if you're doing that, I'm ho I'm hoping that there's a bit of a, a bit of a notation in the full book about what about what qualifies as what qual what would qualify as a one die stunt, what would qualify as more. I realize that's something that is that should be up to the GM, but it doesn't hurt to have guidelines or suggestions. So I think there's a typo on the next one. Yep. Then we have showstopper. A stunt is any th is anything that makes someone in your group noticeably cheer. When this happens, take a vote. If I think that's vote. supposed to be a showstopper is anything that makes someone in your group noticeably <laughs> cheer. Yeah. Um, if the vote passes, your rolls gain ignite one, and all and all ignited dice explode. <laughs> uh, what? So you, you, you describe a stunt, someone in the group is like, holy shit, that's cool. Everybody votes, and if the vote passes, you get Ignite One, and you... <laughs> what the fuck? All ignited dice explode. Roll all rerolls first. Repeat for each new ignited dice until there are no new ignited dice or no more failures in your pool to reroll. When you finish re-rolling, add a die to your pool for every ignited die result. Repeat for each new ignited die until no more ignited dice appear. Count up all the successes when you're done and take a bow. You earned it. That is a way to explode from something like 4d6 to 30. <laughs> oh, you'll only need 10d6. No, you're going to need a cube of d6s, motherfucker. Yeah, may want to may wanna re- this is one of those cases where even though the recommendation is 10d6, let's be honest, when we're dealing with these kind of systems, the recommended amount of d6s is, is yes. Hold on a second. The recommended amount of d6 is... There's a recommendation for that shit? <laughs> I mean, just, just me alone. Uh, here are... 36, 72, 108, D6, right in front of me, motherfucker. Hey, you've got, you've got enough dice to do the cast of a Suicud in game. You're right, I do. And they're all really pretty, too. Like, I'm not going to lie, half the reason I collect dice is because they're fucking pretty. And anyone who, who wants to come after me for that, I'm going to bite your fade off, face off. I, I will Mike Tyson your ass. <laughs> Eat your um, ear. But then we get to the meta resources, which are which in which as we mentioned before are hope and doom. Hope makes good things happen. Your maximum and starting hope is two per player present. Once the game starts, the pool is shared between the party, and anyone can spend one hope to trigger one of three effects, or one. Of the, there's more. There's more, but we're just focusing on three. On three, push increase the die result of any die by one. 
um, burst, so, you immediately gain five momentum. Jesus. And we haven't even seen what momentum does yet, but that sounds like it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, and spout explosion, except establishing a fact about a... Sorry, spout exposition, establishing a fact about an individual or an area. Specifics or costs are going to be in the core book. Jesus Christ! So you so you make the GM tell you more. This feels like, <laughs> this feels like a um a a, tro a trope aware version of the of the hint rule. Yeah. Uh, of course, there's a lot more in the core book, but start here for now. Then we have Doom. Doom. Which of no! Fuck you! Which, <laughs> the GM gets a pool equal to twice the player's hope to spend on the following: <clears throat> no sell, increase any DR after it after it has been declared by one per point of doom spent. Gloat you, i.e. the i.e. the character you're spending the doom on may gain momentum equal to your current doom store score. Plus your power level immediately after knocking down an opponent. A garland will knock you all down! <laughs> Harbinger, a special mark that indicates something bad will happen in the target location. If the GM attempts to place a Harbinger on a target that already has one, that target is destroyed. Player characters are immune to this effect. I got this next one, Monk. <laughs> oh, God. This isn't even my final fun! Memes. You may spend Doom equal to the combined power level of PCs present, or 10 if their power level is greater than 10, to treat, an, to treat an NPC villain as having 5 in all their stats, and they may push all of their dice up by one, up by one once per roll, at will. What the fuck?! <laughs> Oh, you're Man, are you are you turning this game into paranoia? <laughs> if you so it if there are let me put it this way if there are five PCs present and they're all level one they're power level ten at that point mm -hmm. and you have twenty doom you spend ten doom to turn what they're facing into fuck you max stats and I push up all my dice once per roll at will. That's fucked. <laughs> and lastly, Dark Reflection. You may replicate any effect that uses hope by spending an equal amount of doom, with the exception of standout features. <sighs> Does that mean that the DM could Does that mean that the DM could abuse spout exposition? Yes. <laughs> you could have the entire pre boss monologue of any uh, RPG video game you've ever played. Well, we always do. We always do say play to the tropes instead of trying to avoid them. But this, I feel like this person has talked to friend computer of Alpha Complex a little much. <laughs> anyway, then we move to fight some fools. Which first we start with initiative. To determine who goes first. Yes, he does. Roll agility with no bonuses and resolve ties in favor of the players. On your turn, you may move and take an action. Talking is free. Movement takes place in zones. Zones are loosely defined spaces just big enough for you and a couple of others to quickly run up and punch each other. You may move one zone for free while using an ability or two by dashing, which takes up your action for your turn without using an ability. Um, so it's a much more abstract uh, battlefield. And I'm perfectly fine with this level of abstraction versus full theater of the mind. Mm -hmm. It means that for something like this, I can just I can just um, scribble together a a, bun a bunch of circles and have that act as um, zones for an area. I mean, if you really wanted to just do it the laziest way, you would just download any of the battlefields from Rockman.exe games. True. <laughs> I'm not wrong, wrong, and you hate that I'm not wrong. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'd also br I'd also bring up some of the I'd also bring up certain fighting games that have um, stage transfers. Hi, Guilty Gear Strive. 
Let's see, Guilty Gear Strive, several games in the Dead or Alive series, Bushido Blade. There's oh, man. A, there's Bushido a... Blade is a game that... I think you're. I think we're both dating ourselves and showing how weeb we are by knowing exactly what Bushido Blade and Bushido Blade Two are, Monk. I joked about I joked about Grognards being in desperate fear of becoming like the weebs. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I also remember the red box hack using the, using a zone system, and truth be told, it's it's it it means that you can have a visual representation of where the fight's going on. Without needing to have a full, a full map or or something like that, uh, also also means that I can that again we again all that I'd need is just a piece of scratch paper and I'm golden. Um, well then we get to offensive options. So of course we have attack. Pick an ability. Describe your attack. You can hit anything in the same zone as yourself. Your opponent will choose one of the following based on your description, either block or dodge. I'm getting the strangest case of Dijon mustard right now. I know. Tasty. Uh, so with block, they can, it is a task check using using your might versus their endurance. And dodge is agility versus focus. Let's see, then we ha then we have momentum shift. Spend an amount of momentum equal to your opponent's intuition to choose which stat you'd like to attack with versus which stat your opponent must use to defend with. Oh, so that's why momentum is so good. <laughs> it's basic. Yeah, it's basically a cheat. It's, huh, you want to block and block with your really high endurance? No, you're going to try and dodge. And by the way, I'm still hitting with my might and not my agility. Mm -hmm. My five versus your one. Bye bye. Yep. Um, next action we have is use interactable. To use an interactable, interactable, roll your wits versus your target's intuition. If you succeed, you gain one of the following effects. First one is gaps slash barriers. Create an obstacle that blocks movement, preventing opponents from entering this zone. They must beat the assigned DR to pass through. Hazards. Create an obstacle that deals damage to opponents that pass through this zone. And weapons slash cover allows you to add any successes rolled to your next attack or defense as a special stunt bonus. Then there's some defensive options mm -hmm. on the next column. Yep. We have stunt defense. You can add plus one to your DR by describing your defense. If you qualify for a showstopper, the opponent gains botch one. Wait, wait a minute. So you describe a stunt defense. If you qualify for Showstopper, you get all of that igniting and exploding, and your opponent gets botch one? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. See, then we have emergency defense. You can spend five momentum to interrupt, which breaks the current turn order. Then use an interactable to try and escape taking da taking damage. If you fail, you still spend the momentum and take the hit as normal. Risk versus reward. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So we talked about get we talked about the hitting. Now now for well getting hit. Its health system is split into four states: up, down, out, and dying slash KO'd. You start it up and slide down one stage per hit, called taking a shift of damage, and two for a critical. So at up, you're on even terms with your opponents, act normal. Down, you're on the ropes, your attacks do not deal damage unless you beat your opponent's recovery value, resulting in a reversal. Landing a hit causes you to rise up, returning you to the up state. Out, you're on your last legs, you may not land a reversal by any means, and may only... Either attack or move one zone. Landing an attack causes you to rise up as normal. And um, dying slash KO'd, you're out of the fight. Any attacks that land on you will either kill you or cripple you based on opponent discretion. Uh, and critical hits happen when a roll exceeds your critical value or when you've gained enough attrition to meet or exceed your critical value and receive any hit. Upon receiving a critical hit, take two shifts. So this is 
This is really quick and dirty, then. Yeah. <clears throat> but that kind of figures for supers fighting supers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Then we have recovering from di- recovering from damage or def- and and or defending friends. Any hits that <laughs> land generate attrition, which adds to the DR of any recovery attempts you make but does not contribute to reversals. If you beat this DR, rise up, remove the attrition, and act normally on your next turn. If you manage to land a reversal and rise up, write down the number of successes rolled, draw draw a slash, and write your current attrition on the right. Subsequent successes are saved up until you pass your attrition. Once that happens, erase the number and keep fighting. Be careful. If your attrition exceeds your critical value while up, any hits you take are upgraded to critical hits automatically. So this is really gonna is really gonna result in uh, either very quick or very very drawn out uh, encounters. Mm-hmm. Although I think with the showstopper rule, most encounters are going to go in the favor of the players, which. Given the given the source material would certainly make sense. I mean, you're the hero. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I wonder if... Ooh. Ooh. I wonder. Are they planning on making a villain's version of this? Because that'd be fucking cool. <laughs> I don't... I have no idea. I like the idea. And if they, if they don't, we can always hack it. <laughs> Let's see, then we have more on the core. See the core book for the full creation rules, including rules for adding quirks, passive effects that grant characters extra benefits in various situations, and standout features, unique powers that only your character can possess to change the course of any conflict. In addition to more keywords, it the core book introduced functions, modifiers that replace the prefix suffix system and give you distinct benefits to expand your game with additional options for fully customizing your own abilities. These changes are an, are an example of one of Tidebreaker's best features, grooves. Oh, some, someone's playing um, Capcom vs. SNK. Yeah. Did you... Did... I have played Capcom vs. SNK, Monk. Oh, I, I know you have. <laughs> Custom modifications designed to capture the feeling of your favorite genre tropes that can dramatically change how the system works, add a new mechanic, make small alterations to existing content. We're looking forward to publishing setting books featuring new grooves as we explore how the game can be applied to different genres and modes of play. Uh, Well, they included a hacking system in their own game, Monk. Yeah. That's exactly what this is. TTRB. This is a TTRPG developer doing the same thing that um, certain video game developers do when they keep an open mod kit. Which I'm perfectly. I'm perfect. I love it. I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. And obviously, there's nothing stopping people from hacking a game, but. I'm of the I'm of the opinion that it's gonna that since it's gonna happen eventually, you may as well get you may as well give guidelines and advice on how to do it. Yeah. You know, to to steal to steal a bit of a line from Discworld. If if there's always gonna be if there's always gonna be crime, it may as well be organized. <laughs> uh, I love Discworld. <laughs> Uh, then a section called More on Grooves. The following is pulled directly from the full release. What's a groove? Specifically, grooves are alterations of or additions to the rules that are meant to follow a specific theme or otherwise try to recreate the feeling of a familiar trope you've been itching to explore within the context of this system. Grooves, however, are not simply new content. If you're adding a new character option or entries for one of the existing subsystems, tables you haven't changed anything about how the game works grooves are intended to be usually minor adjustments to how the game plays in general 
Something like removing the combat entirely and replacing it with a round of, of Uno would qualify. Adding a function that auto-crits on a 6 is not, though making it a universal rule ob absolutely would, as it changes expectations for everyone without any investment in character creation or progression. That's a really good guideline, actually. Mm -hmm. That just, like, adding a function that makes auto-crits on a 6 isn't a groove, but making auto-crits on a 6 a universal rule is, because it fundamentally changes gameplay. Then we have the template. Name, um, self-explanatory. Purpose, explained in a sentence or two what it's trying to accomplish. Targets, alt altered core rules, character options, or subsystems are the primary targets for a new groove. And details, the main content. Then we have the, and we have the quick start groove. Also, this is the conversion guide for the full version. I am... Um... I like uh, I like the ending of targets there. Mm -hmm. If you add something new that the game doesn't do at all, list it as a new system. Seriously, we'd like a take on being a veterinarian or a farmer in the future. Tag us on Twitter if you're up to it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Then we have the quick start groove. The purpose, this entire document is actually a groove in practice. We wrote this to get people into Tidebreaker faster <laughs> by showcasing the core rules. But also, we just really like Evil Hat's Fate Accelerated approach at ability generation and wanted to write a similar mechanic as an homage to the big homies. Um, this, might be, this might be arrogant on my part, but I actually prefer the approach that I'm seeing here over the ability creation in Fate Accelerated. <laughs> um, Largely because the the problem that I have with Fate and Fate Accelerated is a lack of guidance. I know I've brought I know I've brought this up before, but the but this especially applies to things like aspects, yeah, and and how they and how they work within this within the system, as well as the as well as the whole thing of stunts being a giant cluster, one that you seem to be discouraged from um, exploring. Simply because more stunts means means a lesser means a smaller cap when it comes to your extra effort pool, i.e., fate points. Mm -hmm. oh. Granted, I do. Granted, I can I can see the fate DNA when it comes to when it comes to the um, abilities, the core abilities be, being not too far removed from the approaches in Fate Accelerated. Mm -hmm. But. The fact the fact that it the fact that we have a prefix suffix system is a far is far better than playing swim damn it. Yeah. And there will be a swim damn it section in the main game from what it was saying, mm -hmm. but the prefix suffix section will still exist too. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have what do we what do we call that monk? Is that a proper learning curve? Holy shit! <laughs> See then with details, remove most of the options for hope, doom, and combat. Remove quirks, functions, <laughs> features. Create a new ability generation method. Then conversion notes. When you make a full character, just add in your quirks and standout feature to your existing character. If you want to keep the current ability generation, the rest of this game will still play more or less the same. Just change any instances of function to this ability when in effect. As for anything function related, otherwise take your existing abilities and replace them <clears throat> with the functions that resemble your current set, and have fun as they essentially provide you with all the relevant situations and keyword interactions you would normally need to pick on your own. And that's the, fucking cool. Then the final page on on the thing as a set of bullet points that are going to be in the full version: full character creation rules, full hope and doom rules. Full scenario generation slash spheres of influence rules, which is some which is something we didn't get something we didn't dip into much in this quick start. A system to make your own consumable options and price them for trade. Um, kaiju and vehicles, more options. Woo! For that. Um, rules for hordes of enemies led by dastardly villains with unique boss powers and more, and a hyperlink to their Discord. And that. That pretty much covers all. That pretty much covers all of it. Um, 
when it comes to the when it comes to the because of the fact that this was the presentation of the core loop, I think we can start with that. Um, I do think that this is good. That oddly enough, I think I think Tidebreaker is going to be a game that's easier the less foreknowledge you have when it comes to TTRPGs. Especially the less foreknowledge you have when it comes to universal RPGs. Yeah, I, I also th I I think it, it's actually um from what we're seeing here and what it probably looks how that's going to expand in the main uh, system. This would be a really good game for some beginners. Yeah, it also means I can throw I can throw this in the face of everybody who keeps saying that D and D is a good beginners game. And before anyone asks, you're only saying that because 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 of your hate boner for fi for five E's design. No. I said this. I said this with fourth, with third, and with AD and D second. And if I was alive, if I was alive to play it when I was younger, I probably would have said that about about even BX. <laughs> uh, well, and I think it's always important for us to bring up the same point we always do about games for beginners. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a single game for beginners. No. You have to play to your audience and their general <laughs> levels of. Uh, understanding and comprehension, mm -hmm. as well as their interest. Yeah, but I would say I would say that Tidebreaker is is dipping into the same general territory that Savage Worlds is doing, in yeah. the in the sense of them being, ga them them being um, pulpy leaning games that have an emphasis on speed. Yeah, this is this is really a game where. It very much feels to me like you don't, you wouldn't even need to do a campaign. Although, because this is supers focused, and you have comic book arcs with large stories, you absolutely could. But this just feels like something you could. You're bored with your friends one day. You sit down. You're like, guys, let's play. Let's play a game of tiebreaker. And you just fucking roll up some new, some new characters, and you go and have a nice little fucking adventure. I could easily see us doing us us doing a beer and pretzels tidebreaker using this and um, Fatum for creation. That would be <laughs> yes. We actually do need to do that sometime. I'm sorry, you've 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 got it stuck in my head now, monk. You're welcome. And that that applies to either the original Fatum that we did that, that we did for that episode of Geek Watch a while back, or the Fatum Dark Myths, which I'm probably going to be getting in about a month. <laughs> I, ba I back the thing. It's just it's just I don't know I don't know when they ship out, and I um I had to I had to do a bit of a scramble because that because when I got the announcement of them shipping soon, I was like, oh shit! I just mo I just moved a couple months ago. Yeah. Got to change all your addresses. Yeah, that's been the re that's that's always the pain when it comes to moving when you are when you're involved with a lot of crowd funds. I've already had a I've already had a few cases where some where something I ordered um, ended up going to the wrong address. But I do think I do think that the her one particular her one particular hurdle is. And this is the reason why I said that people who have a degree of foreknowledge when it comes to when it comes to TTRPGs might be at a bit bit of a disadvantage is assumptions. This is why I brought up the whole thing with wild talents because consider consider the way um, powers are presented in any supers game or even any universals game. It's a list of effects, a list of pre of predetermined defined effects. Which yeah, is fair, which is standard fare for most of the industry. However, yeah. what something like Wild Talents is asking you, as not far removed from what something like Tidebreaker is asking you, it is not asking you to pick the to to pick the closest effects from the, from a um, from a short list. It's asking you what do you do, and you and you and you having to create a create those three sentences. It reminds me of Cipher System. Um, a little bit. If I'm being if I'm being honest, I'm less reminded of Cipher <clears throat> System, and more reminded of once again Marvel Heroic. Mm -hmm. And 
to a lesser degree, um, Firefly and the other games that used um, Cortex Plus. Mm -hmm. Largely because it largely because it had the, it had that um, combination setup. Yeah, they it was a pow a power set a in a um a and a few other ta a few other tags. One of the tags being their equivalent of skills. Now, I do some of the terminology is going to throw people off. Exploding and advantage, I can see throwing pe throwing people off just out of habits. Yeah, like I said, exploding is in most people's uh, what's the what's the word for it? Uh, common consciousness yeah. <laughs> among among the people in the TTRPG scene. When you hear exploding, the first thing you think is, "I rolled max on this die." It it rolls again. Mm -hmm. I would rec. I, I'm not sure if this is in the cards for for the game's development, but I would recommend attaching it attaching some sort of cheat sheet to the character sheet proper, or attaching a or put or putting it as a separate p separate pdf on the on their website mm -hmm. you know because there because again there's an approach here that is going to have a bit of a hurdle especially when it comes to things like botch Cause yeah because when people think when people think of botches they think of, they think of the rolling extra poorly i.e yeah in world of darkness ro um fail failing to failing to get a success and then get and getting ha and getting half of the die as ones, the glitch r the glitch rule when it comes to Shadowrun, um, of course natural ones when it comes to any game in the D twenty system, you get the idea. Oh, and because of the fact that bo that botches are cer botch even botch one can certainly be can certainly have an effect on this ge on this game. It's not going to be the 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 same kind of effect that people would assume it is. Mm. So I do th I do think that's some that's even if it's just a little diagram like box in the character sheet that it, that alone is going to go far. Um. But I, but the I think the I think the final book is going to live and die on how it presents its particular approach. If there's if there's a lack of if there's a lack of examples, which it doesn't look like there's gonna be, that's gonna that's gonna end up working against the game. Espe especially when especially when it comes to the when it comes to the whole new player thing. Um, I'd almost I I hesitate to say this, but I'd almost say that the that this is a slightly crunchier version of Wushu. <laughs> I, uh, I'm being facetious, I hate, of course. I I know, but you're also not wrong. <laughs> like, but that's like saying that <clears throat> that um, ice cream, plain vanilla ice cream, is slightly crunchier than cotton candy. They're both really soft and melt in your mouth. Yeah. Now. With that, I don't know what I don't know when the full book will be will come will come out, but I may depending on depending on the situation, it may either get a proper review or I may put or I may do it as a Valley of the Judged, but we'll see we'll see. Obviously, obviously, it's not going to go into a deep dive Valley of the Judged for a while for a while because, well, the deep dive entry we've got that slot filled for the next few months. <laughs> so and speak speaking of that we will be de we will be delving headfirst into the, into that particular subject matter this fr this Friday and you, and most people will see it shortly afterwards and uh, and of course I'll have I'll have a few other I'll have a few other surprises in the coming days but until then on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.